Many a times you find yourself in a studio shooting with one particular lighting technique you've mastered over some time. And you find yourself shooting, say, three outfits with the same lighting technique. And to me personally, it doesn't look like you're being versatile when it comes to shooting. It might be the fact that you're good with that and there's nothing wrong with it. But I feel like you can improve such shoots by implementing different lighting techniques. In today's video, we'll be looking at one lighting for signature lighting techniques. So what's up guys, my name is Kojo Joey and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, kindly make sure you subscribe before you leave. If you're old and you haven't subscribed yet and you're visiting once again, please make it a point to subscribe like right now. Leave a comment down in the comment section box if you have any questions. Give me a thumbs up if you find this video interesting or even the intro caught your attention. And let's just get right into today's video. So like I mentioned earlier, we'll be looking at one light, four lighting techniques or four signature portrait lighting techniques. I have so far shot with all these lighting techniques and believe me, I have one favorite one. If you've been with me on my journey on my YouTube, you know I usually have just one particular lighting technique I use mostly when I'm shooting beauty, even portraits. But you know, if you haven't been here and you're new, I think it will be new to you. So I'm just going to talk about them. But first off, let's start with the Rembrandt lighting technique. The Rembrandt lighting technique is characterized by the triangle found on the other side of whoever it is you're shooting when the light is coming in from the opposite side. So if to me right now, if the light is coming in from camera left, right, you're supposed to see a triangle created here on camera right on my face. I'm going to pull up an image just so that you can see all these. Right. The second signature portrait lighting technique I'll be talking about is the loop kind of lighting. The loop kind of lighting is characterized by seeing the light right above your subject head. Mostly you can find this lighting setup in the natural setting when the sun is at 12 noon. It's right above your subject, creating that raccoon kind of shadow underneath your subject's eye. There's a way you can fix that which I will demonstrate in the upcoming video. So stay and watch that video and understand how best you can use this loop lighting or overhead lighting to make your portraits look better. Keeping the third signature portrait lighting in mind, we'll be looking at shooting with the Paramount. The Paramount lighting technique is mostly seen in Hollywood movies where this kind of lighting is very flattering on the subject. I'm currently using the Paramount on me right now with the video lights I have right in front of me. It's mostly centered in front of your subject. It can be mistaken for what we call the clamshell lighting because mostly you have to introduce a reflector beneath. But aside from that, the Paramount is supposed to flatten your subject and make sure the light hitting your subject gives a very smooth and easy fall off of light on your subject's face, um, taking away the blemishes, also taking away any imperfections that has to come with whether makeup or any, you know, any uh, um, skin tone variation on the skin. If the lighting is okay, if the lighting is well fixed, if the lighting is well positioned, you're not going to find any difficulties when you're working on a Paramount shots or a Paramount lit shots picture whenever you have such images. With the fourth signature portrait lighting technique in mind, I am going to talk about the rim kind of lighting. The rim lighting is used mostly as a supplement for shooting either two lighting setup or three lighting setup. Mostly it just separates your subjects from the background, but you can also use the rim lighting technique as um, a key light source where you are either creating a dramatic portrait a low-key kind of portrait or you're also looking at creating suspense creating um mystery around whatever person you're shooting most of the time you see me use this kind of lighting for male models not that i've shot a lot of male models on my youtube which i look at doing that but i used it today on a female model and i think i enjoyed how the images came out i also employed using the services of my reflector just to bounce back light to make the image look or open up my shadows if you're new here, before you leave, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Make it a point to leave a like, drop down in the comment section box if you have any questions in the upcoming video and I'll just get right to it. So please enjoy this video and make sure you learn a thing or two from the upcoming video. Also make sure that you practice whatever you learn from my YouTube channel. Just don't watch it and think you can be able to uh, uh, mimic or recreate whatever it is that has been created in today's video. I'm going to leave each and every one's handle down in the description box. Please make it a point to visit either of them if you're interested in the services they provide. And I'll see you in my next video. Peace. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll be looking at one light, four signature portrait lighting techniques that I think people use all the time. 
Right, in today's video, we have our beautiful model, Fia, and ah, the nice glam was done by some gentleman behind the camera. Right, so like I mentioned, one light. So we have, oh yeah, we have the 101 centimeter umbrella with the Godox AD100 Pro. This is like the best low budget setup you ever get for a lighting setup. Right. This goes for as cheap as 140 Ghana cities, and this goes as cheap as 1,008 Ghana cities. One thing I like about this setup is it's small. I can just collapse this and put it in my camera bag, which is quite big, right? And I can just carry it anywhere. It's, it doesn't have a lot, a lot of weight to put to this. So let's just get right into shooting with this. It doesn't come with a C-stand though. This C-stand costs enough. But yeah, that's not what we're about. I'm just talking about the AD100 Pro and the 101cm umbrella that you're seeing over here. So I'm just going to use that to light up our portrait today and see how best we can make sure she looks beautiful in an image. Right, so you can see this lovely backdrop. I got this from Pixel Junkies. If you're interested, you can just check out their handle down in the description box below. I'm going to leave everyone's handle down in the description box. A link to the AD100 Pro, a link to the 101 centimeter Godox box. Also, I think I'm going to talk to Shikat to have like a bundle for home budget studio lighting. This is the cheapest, I think. It should come with a stand just so that you'll be able to do a lot with that. That should be, I think, roughly under 3,000 Ghana cities. If you're looking at just having that portable, that affordable studio lighting in your home. Right, so this setup, I just out of the head brought it out currently i'll be shooting with my x2t trigger my canon 5d mark 4 and the sigma 85 1.4 okay currently my iso is at 160 f-stop at 5.6 set us be one over 160 but like i have said so many times the settings i use in the studio doesn't matter just because i have a different studio space from whatever studio space you'll be shooting with so First off, I'm going to start with the first signature portrait lighting technique, which is the Rembrandt lighting. Rembrandt lighting is characterized by having a triangle on the other side of the model's face to which the light hits. Right, so if the light is coming in from our model, I mean, from the right side of our model, the triangle is going to be created somewhere around here on her cheeks. It's something some Italian painter came up with. So, Currently, I think I've mentioned my settings to you. So let me just quickly see how best I can do that. All right, so let's lean towards here. Let's take a look at me. And that's it, beautiful. I think one shot should be, one shot should do it. Yeah, so I'm going to pull up this image on the screen, zoom in just so that you can see that triangle coming in from the face of our model. So what you can also do is, if you, are, you, you, you find yourself shooting this kind of lighting setup outdoors, anything I'm going to be talking about today can be done outdoors using natural light. The only thing you need to consider is the position of the sun and also how you're going to position your model, right? So assuming we can't move our light source, I'll just make sure I move the subject, the face of the subject towards the direction of the light just so that I can have that Rembrandt light. Okay. So, I love what I'm seeing so far. Kindly turn your face towards, not too much beautiful. Don't send the eyeballs all the way there, bring the eyeballs here. Right, kindly turn up and part your lips. So, the space in between the lips. Beautiful, let's keep that. And I like this, I really do. Also, one, one thing you should realize is, anything in one light, of course you're going to get the other side being dark. Right, so I am going to introduce I think a reflector. I have to me the 105 by 200 centimeter reflector. This also shouldn't cost you that much. I think roughly 200 Ghana cities. So if you started um, budgeting for studio stuff, this should be also part of the things you should get. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't have. A reflector holder, so I'm going to use the box. Okay, 
you should also notice or have in mind that how close your reflector is to your subject will also affect the amount of light source being reflected back right and the angle of the reflector everything matters when it comes to light so i'm just going to keep on taking another one there's another shot can we send the face here lean towards it yes that should be it send the legs this way both legs doesn't keep on going okay great so let's try another shot again kindly turn up open the lips and bam okay so if we should compare the previous photo to this photo you realize this side of the face has a little bit of light being introduced in there because of this white reflector we are using over here it just opens up the shadows just so that if you edit and in post you can be able to bring back some details if you really want to pull out details from the shadow right that should be it about rembrandt's lights and side lighting mostly rembrandt's lighting is associated with side lighting because as you can see the light is coming in from the back okay so let me quickly switch to the second one which should be loop lighting and loop lighting is characterized by the lights coming in from the top mostly we call that overhead lighting so i'm just going to bring the up all over the head this way and i i want to say something about the loop lighting technique too i'm about to take two separate images right so i have this right i'm going to pull it up on the screen and i have this i'm also going to pull that up on the screen if we compare the two images one had the light right overhead our subject and the other one had the light a little bit distanced away from our subject. What you should know or what you shouldn't do is to put the light right over the subject's head. You introduce what we call the raccoon kind of eye box where you get to see a lot of shadows forming underneath the eye of your model. This is associated with shooting, I think, somewhere around 12 o'clock right in the afternoon when you're shooting outdoors. So, if that is what you're going in for, you can use that. If not, kindly make sure you move the light right away from our subject, just so that it's the spill that gets to the subject rather than that hot spot coming in from the middle. This looks great. What is what this is also what this is also doing is making sure light is not hitting our background. So if you're looking at make, uh, making your background a bit darker by lighting up your subject and your set, you can. Um, employ the services of the loop kind of lighting technique and have another fill coming in right from below. So I'm just going to introduce my white bounce card. If you've been with me on my YouTube channel, you know I like using the white bounce a lot. Okay, so I'm just going to put it on your tie this way. And right, kindly hold it for me. Let me reposition this just right above you this way and you can use this kind of lighting setup so don't worry just feel free you know what sit on the side of your tie no 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 so have you planked before planking yeah you see to the side so sit yes that should be it beautiful all right so i'm just going to quickly take a shot And as you can see, we have this filling in the shadows from below. Kindly hold on to this for me. Let me bring this in. Drop it. Let me have your legs go this way. Right, so let's take a look at this shot also. Send the face this way. Okay. The eyeballs somewhere here kind of reach up 
for last time. Give us one. Beautiful. So if you take a look at the frame I have over here, this is doing a good job by bouncing back some light onto a subject. This is giving me all the ample light I need. And you can see that at the edge, if the video guy can come here and come and show them this, you can literally see the distance between the light source and our subject. I think should be uh, yay high or yay far away from our subject. And this is this this is something I really enjoy using when I'm shooting most of my beauty shots, the overhead, sometimes even portraits. But I don't employ this when I'm doing full body portraits, just because the light travel from our light source right to the down, we will have to lose a lot of light and I'll have to introduce another light source. But today's video, we are concentrating on just using one light. Okay, next on the list should be what I call paramount lighting because I can just switch this and I'm good to go. One good thing I like about the AD100 or this cool setup, if I had my AD600 on this C stand and I was flipping this, it would be a whole lot of work, trust me. But this is so small, less heavy, and the moment I rotate this, it doesn't rotate back. So yeah, I love this setup. I really do. So you can, let me make sure it's on the right leg. Yeah. That should be fine. Is it right above you? Is it right in the middle? Where should I move it to? Towards me or this way? Okay. All right. So what you need to also realize is that we have increased the distance of the light from our subject. So we are going to have an amount of light loss from whatever we've shot so far. So what I can do to this is to make sure either I increase the power or I increase my ISO. I didn't mention, or I think I mentioned it, but I'll mention it again. My ISO is at 160, my f-stop 5.6, and my shutter speed over one. My shutter speed is somewhere around one over 160 of a second. Like I explained, this doesn't matter. I have a video up here explaining all this that I said, why it doesn't matter. All right, so Paramount, this is characterized by having um, our subject and our background as lit as possible. Mostly, if you find this kind of lighting setup used in movies when they want to have flattering lights on the subject they are shooting, trying to take away the fact that the subject has blemish or there's bad makeup or anything of that sort, right? This is used to make sure the light hitting our subject is very flattering to escape all these errors seen when say you angle the lights coming in from let's say the right side or the left side or the back side i hope that explains it so i'm going to take a shot with this distance increased right we have this this is well lit but compared to the previous exposure i am going to increase my iso to 250 let's see what 250 does honey lean don't forget here I think I like the exposure I'm getting from 250. Let me send it a stop down to 200, then to the head to your right. Yeah, beautiful. I think 250 should do it for me. Can I get a big smile coming in? A big one. Beautiful. One last time, chin up. Beautiful. Big smile. <laughs> Which kind of smile is it? Right. So if you're looking at getting this kind of lighting, I'm going to pull up the image. You can introduce the Paramount lighting just to avoid all the mistakes you're going to see if you shoot with, let's say, a side light or a backlight. The only thing I don't like about this Paramount lighting for full body portraits or portraits is it flattens the image because it doesn't create any depth between what's in the foreground, the subject itself, and the background. Right, the last but not least, it's not the last 
of any of the lighting setups. It's just the last one for today's video should be what I usually call rim lighting or backlighting. So I'm just going to make sure this is angled this way. So this kind of lighting, mostly if I want to introduce drama, if I want to create suspense, if I want to make sure whoever it is I'm shooting has this mysterious um, vibe around them. This is the lighting setup I usually implement. Also, you don't see this being used on females a lot. So I'm not expecting it to come out great today, but if it does, then that means it's a plus for us and we can use it anytime. I use this most of the time when I'm shooting male models or people of high figure just to make sure they have that, you know, um, that prestige. Okay, so my ISO back to 160. F for 5.6, F 5.6, shutter speed on over 160. Okay, so let me have you lean. Beautiful. Let's make sure. So, I should have explained this also. This lighting setup, if you don't take care, you're not going to make whoever it is you're shooting flash on. You'd have to move the subject you're shooting just so that it becomes flashing enough. So what I want you to do is, right, go back to the previous pose, right, and move the face. Beautiful. Okay, so we have this. All right, you can see the light coming in from the back, peeping from the back, right? And this is doing a good job by reflecting the lights back. This also is doing a good job by reflecting the light back onto our subject just so that we can have some open shadows in the image so if you take a look at this i don't know if it will look nice for you but to me it looks good what do you think yeah this is something i would like to post yeah looks great so far the various four signature portrait lighting techniques i have shown you is what i usually use when i have any client in the studio so mostly you can have someone going like the have two outfits, three outfits to shoot, right? And what you can do is to make sure that whoever it is you're shooting can have a feel of different lighting techniques when they come into your studio or your home studio, anywhere you're shooting or even outdoors. Because if, say, the subject you're shooting has like two outfits and you shoot the same two outfits, like let's say, Paramount's lighting technique or the Rembrandt's lighting technique, it, it still looks the same, right? But give them the experience of, say, maybe the shots two days after they did the first shoot or they shot three days after they did the second shoot and it makes it look very very interesting so i think that's that for today's video thank you so much for watching today's video if you have any questions kindly leave them down in the comment section box thank you so much if you for coming in today for today's video i know i'm going to get to the food i know you're hungry right thanks to judah for the makeup he did for us he's right behind the camera Thanks to Shikakope for sponsoring today's video. So let me talk about Shikakope. Shikakope is an online platform where anything camera accessory you can get. Like how I got the AD100 Pro and the 101cm um, umbrella from their website. You can just pull up their website www.shikakope.com. I'll leave a link down in the description box. Anything you want to buy, if you want to build up a studio, I'm, I think I'm going to let her know that she should have a bundle for this under budget studio stuff which comes with the 8100 Pro, this and a license, and maybe some backdrop stands and a backdrop, just so that you'll be able to, you know, come up with very good lighting techniques in your home or wherever it is you are. So if you're interested, um, like I said, I'm going to leave a link down in the description. One thing I like about their website or their brand is, whoever it is they've partnered with, especially Godox, Godox gives them warranty and that comes with terms and conditions. So if I have a problem with this, my Godox 101 centimeter box, also the Godox 8100 Pro, maybe there's a fault to it. I can just send it back. They check out whatever it is claim that I've made that this is not working or there's a fault to this. They replace it as a result of the warranty they've given me. So thank you so much for watching today's video. Thank you so much to our sponsors, Shikakope. Um, thank you to everyone who sponsored today's video or who helped in today's video, the video guy. That guy at the back, a lovely model, and not forgetting Pixel Junkies for providing this amazing backdrop. So if you're interested, I'll leave a sample down in the description box. 
Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe as usual. Don't forget to go and follow. Peace.